Hey everyone, Pastor Tim here from the Church at West Shore. Welcome to our daily devotion and prayer time. The Thursday edition, also known as Friday Light. We've almost made it and we are in Numbers chapter 24. Beginning at verse 1, God says to us, By now, Balaam realized that the Lord was determined to bless Israel. So he did not resort to divination as before. Instead, he turned and looked out toward the wilderness where he saw the people of Israel camped, tribe by tribe. Then the Spirit of God came upon him, and this is the message he delivered. This is the message of Balaam, son of Baor, the message of the man whose eyes see clearly, the message of one who hears the words of God, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob! How lovely are your homes, O Israel! They spread before me like palm groves, like gardens by the riverside. They are like tall trees planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. Water will flow from their buckets. Their offspring have all they need. Their king will be greater than a God, and their kingdom will be exalted. God brought them out of Egypt, for he is as strong as a wild ox. He devours all the nations that oppose him, breaking their bones in pieces, shooting them with arrows like a lion. Israel crouches and lies down like a lioness who dares who dares to arouse her. Blessed is everyone who blesses you, O Israel, and cursed is everyone who curses you. King Balak flew into a rage against Balaam. He angrily clapped his hands and shouted, I called you to curse my enemies. Instead, you have blessed them three times. Now get out of here. Go back home. I promise to reward you richly, but the Lord has kept you from your reward. Balaam told Balak, don't you remember what I told your messengers? I said, even if Balak were to give me his palace filled with silver and gold, I would be powerless to do anything against the will of the Lord. I told you that I could say only what the Lord says. Now I am returning to my own people. But first, let me tell you what the Israelites will do to your people in the future. This is the message Balaam delivered. This is the message of Balaam, son of Beor, the message of the man whose eyes see clearly, the message of the one who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. I see him, but not here and now. I perceive him, but far in the distant future. A star will rise from Jacob. A scepter will emerge from Israel. It will crush the heads of Moab's people, cracking the skulls of the people of Sheth. Edom will take will be taken over and Seir, its enemies will be conquered while Israel marches on in triumph. A ruler will rise in Jacob who will destroy the survivors of Ir. Then Balaam looked over toward the people of Amalek and delivered this message. Amalek was the greatest of nations, but its destiny is destruction. Then he looked over toward the Kenites and delivered this message. Your home is secure, your nest is set in the rocks, but the Kenites will be destroyed when Assyria takes you captive. Balaam concluded his messages by saying, Alas, who can survive unless God has willed it? Ships will come from the coast of Cyprus. They will oppress Assyria and afflict Eber, but they too will be utterly destroyed. Then Balaam left and returned home, and Balak also went on his way. So this story of Balaam and Balak is it's very interesting, especially from the perspective of Balaam, because he was intended to be an enemy of the Israelites. And through a natural progression that God ordained, he was drawn closer and closer to God. And even at the end, he came to the point of, just totally opposing his king Balak saying we can't do this it's God's people I've received messages from God so we uh, we see a transformation in Balaam's life you know I was thinking about it this is much like what happens when someone is on the journey to becoming a follower of Jesus Christ they they are opposed to God they become interested in God they start learning about God, then they are convinced to give their lives to Jesus Christ. And that begins a whole new journey, a lifelong journey, if you will, of getting to the point to where you're totally com com committed, totally sold out to Jesus Christ. 
It's often been said that the life of a Christ follower is not a sprint, it is a marathon. That is so true, my friends, it is so true. We are on a long journey. The part of it that we spend here on earth is just a, less than a grain of sand in the scope of eternity. So let us strive today and every day to move closer to our Lord, to move closer to our Savior in everything we do, in everything we say, so that Jesus would be lifted up and glorified in our lives. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to have a sneak peek into the life of Balaam and Balak and how you interacted with them concerning your children, concerning the children of Israel. Help us, Father, to understand that we're on a journey to draw closer and closer to you and help us to do that today and every day. And we pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I trust you'll have a terrific Thursday. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Friday for the end of the week devotion. Until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. And may you fall just a little bit deeper in love with Jesus today. Take care. May God bless you.